Because everybody loves hearing about blessings, but we're under the curses because we did not suffer. We did not listen to the Most High God. Meanwhile, we bringing out the truth of God. Brothers and sisters still going in the smoke shack, still smoking their lives away. Smoking is a sin. You're destroying the temple that God gave you. Right. And he's known you. Right. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Which you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have not done. Read them. To observe and to do all his commandments. We don't even keep the simple commandments, such as thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, no adultery. Right. We don't keep that. Honor the Sabbath. Honor thy mother, thy daughter. I mean, honor thy mother, thy father, thy mother. Right? We don't do that. We don't keep the basis. Right. Read. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. He'll set you on high we kept the commandments. But yet we still in, uh, in filth. We still on the side of the street. We still homeless. We still in ghettos. We still have no hope. Giving our last dollar to a pastor of people that don't care about us. That don't care about who we are, what we suffer through, that can never understand us the way that our father understood us. Can never understand us the way that we understand each other. But yet still, we continue to do these things in defiance to the Most High. Give me 15. Give me 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15 through 68 will come on the Israelite man right. and the Israelite woman right. if you do not hearken to the Most High God. Right. So when you find yourself, give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 60. Let's talk about destruction. Let's talk about the, the, the state that the black man is in right now. Let's talk about, let's make it real. Because you're still walking into the smoke shack. You're still chilling out in the club. We're still in the same situation. The prophets is out here. We here to bring this healing, the spiritual healing and this medicine to our people in these communities. But yet it's another day. It's another day. Y'all still running around doing as y'all will. So we're gonna see what the Bible says about the destruction that's coming to us. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of. Hold up, all the diseases of Egypt? Are we in Egypt? Babylon is known as spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. We're in Egypt now. You just had a pandemic, COVID-19. Colds, you have flus, you have viruses, you have, what was it, uh, swine flu. You had all these diseases here in America and it will continue to increase until you hearken unto the Most High God. Read on. Which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Let's understand something. God said the diseases which you were afraid of, the things that you were afraid of, COVID-19, the pandemic, the new things, serious coming out in the earth, which you were afraid of. Come over here, family. Learn about who you are according to the Bible. Hey, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of this gospel, man. We're your family. Right. One way or another, whether you hear, whether you forbear, these things must come to pass. Right. Come up here, my brothers. Come up here. That's Let me teach y'all something. That's who you are right there. All praise to the Most High. What's y'all names, yeah, man? That's who you are. Darius King. I said it right, King. I'm Uriel. So Darius and King, I know y'all heard me. I'm loud. I got the speaker and everything. But I want to I want to share with y'all that y'all the children of Israel. Look on this side for me real quick. Y'all come here. I ain't gonna bite. I promise y'all I ain't gonna bite. This brother been reading strong for a minute. Y'all see me bulldozing over him? Nah. Read. Look, all right. So what's your father? Hmm? What's your father? You know who your dad is? Where's he from? Here, America, the islands. America? All right, so I know, like I said, I had this speaker and everything, but I'm gonna break it down to y'all. So if y'all if y'all fathers, Darius and King, come from America, right? Y'all from the tribe of Judah. All right, that's the tribe of Christ himself. Let me ask y'all something, because I'm in a raptor. I know y'all don't want to hear me sit here like I'm on a pool pit. We go, y'all just got to listen to a man with a Bible. We're going to build together, because we family. And I don't want y'all to feel like, you know, I'm here trying to prove a point or something. I'm here trying to save y'all souls. All right, y'all know Christ is black? Yes. Yeah. Yes? How you doing? Man? You know Christ is black? Check don't, out come here, come here, come here. Come here, give me Revelation 1 and 1. 
What uh, y'all in middle school, high school, elementary? You in middle school? You going to high school? Okay, you in elementary? How you doing, sis? These are the twelve tribes of Israel. Yeah, we going over who we are according to the Bible, and that Christ is a black is uh, a black man. Right. The black Messiah. That's right. All praise to the Most High God. You know Christ is a black man. Yes. All praises. We about to get that in the Bible because it's very important. Imagery is very important to our people. Right. The Bible said we're gonna go many days without an image, a king, right? But we have a king. It's just been sealed up and it's right. been kept away from us from by our enemies, right? Now I know a lot of people say. The spiritual enemy and the devil is the devil, which is true. And he has a people here on the earth. Read Revelation 1 and 1. Oh, my bad. Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. John the 14. All right, so this, we had to start off with that. Because this is what God is showing us, right? God is showing his servants, us, us. His children, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, according to the Bible, the Israelites. Everybody said we fallen out of existence. We're not a real people. No, we are real people trapped in this hell. And it's very real. It's very real. We got to get out. It's very important that you young kings and prophets learn this. Because this is going to make you different from everybody else. It's going to make you stand out. But you have to understand this. Now, you said, is Christ a black man? Now, you see me pointing at this picture right here. I want y'all to come close, man. I'm not going to bite y'all. Since you can come close too, take pictures. Do whatever you got to do. We're going to read it out the Bible. And you tell me, is this a depiction of Christ or is this a depiction of Christ? Revelations chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Let me ask y'all something. What's the texture of wool? What's the texture of wool? You know what wool is? You ever seen a sheep? You ever seen a lamb? You know how like it's... It's like furry like that. It's a certain type of texture. Hair like wool. So I told you I'm interactive. This ain't gonna be I'm just sitting in the pool pit reading the Bible and y'all, you catch some pieces or not. Now it's very important that we all understand what this means to us today. All right? So when you see wool, who has wool? This man or this man? This man, it's clear as day. What's on top of your head? Wool, wool is simple to understand. So that's like a woolly, look, I got locks. This is another test of wool. This is another test of wool. If we can see our brothers and sisters with that all day, and sis, you have beautiful hair. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a wig or it's a wig. You have beautiful hair. Under this, God gave it to you. God gave it to you. That's why we honor our Lord by having our hair. Like the Lord said, you went for you sisters. Your hair is your glory. That's your glory. But being in this place, we all been trodden down to make it seem like guess what? It's a shame for us to wear our natural born hair. What they call out here? You, I don't know how old you are, sis. And I, I but if you can work with me, because we got young men here, you know what I'm saying? And it's edification, because whether they hear, whether they forbear, the word going out. Right. And it's important. Some young lady somewhere is out here and see you as an older sister in the community needs to hear that. To hear that, hey, my hair is beautiful. Right. How many times y'all heard that black is beautiful? Several. But how many times y'all heard that? You never heard it. But God, but God is a black man. Right. You understand that? God is a black man, the author of beauty. Right. You understand that? Now I don't want y'all to think it's weak to sit here and say, uh, uh, you know, kind of funny, say a man is beautiful, a man is handsome. Give me Song of Solomon one and five. Give me Song of Solomon one and five. I am black, but comely. What does comely mean? Y'all know what that mean? Comely means beautiful. This is King Solomon, one of the kings in the Bible. He said he's black. You heard that, right? I ain't pulled that out. I ain't some evil dude out here trying to say, yeah, black and black and black. No, the Bible say that. You go, your parents go to church? They tell you about church? You don't heard every Sunday? Yeah. No. This is what's in that Bible. Right. That you are beautiful. You handsome. You're a beautiful sister. This is inspiration. We need to hear it. Right. When you go back to school, I don't expect you to be like, yo. I learned the other day that some man on the street told me Christ is black. That would be wonderful if you do. But I'm doing this to build up my community. Because right. I have children. I have little brothers. Y'all my little brothers. You like a mother, you might not even know it. You don't even know it yet. But the black community has been broken down so bad that we can't see that. Right. I told you to come close. Look how far away you is. <laughs> Think about that. Ain't that crazy? I told you I'm your brother. I'm out here. What type of threat I'm going to do to y'all? I asked y'all name. I said, there's King. You're real. I ain't even get your name, but I'm trying to build with my family right here. I'm not no threat to y'all. I'm trying to solve the problems. 
we're trying to solve the problems in the black community. Right. But it starts with that one-on-one -on -one interaction. And like I said, Christ is a black man, so let's go back to 114. Because it's very important. I want y'all to understand that y'all are gods on the earth. We more than what you believe you to, yourself to be. We only allow ourselves to be in this situation because we don't know better. Which is why we do harm to each other. Which is why we got things like a smoke shot. How old are y'all? Middle school, elementary school, how old are y'all? You 14, how old are you? 10, that's right there. What are they pushing your age? Don't smoke, don't do nothing, don't drink, no, no, don't get drunk, none of that. But yet, this is here in our community. Our young men walking around, they see this, they see an older brother come out. <sighs> hey, don't do this, young man. You want something? In the same breath, that's crazy, ain't it? I'm sure you at, when I was your age, I grew up in this perverse generation, my damn self, right? And I already know. Middle school, they were trying to say, hey, yo, let's go smoke, let's go drink, let's go do a little song, let's go get some sisters, let's go party. I know you were supposed to all that, but this is a chance to save your life. This is a chance. I ain't saying you got to be in the choir and be dancing and singing because that's not what we about. We ain't out here dancing. You heard me sing a song yet? Nah, I'm talking about to y'all about grown man stuff. Right. I'm talking to you about adult business. Right. That's what we doing, we building. So let's get back to the Bible because I've been... Parallel, uh, too long. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Hey, there is King. What's wool look like? We just went, I told y'all I'm going to be in the rat. What's wool look like? Hair. Like what type of hair? Give me an animal, a sheep. Y'all teaching me? We building. What is it? A sheep? A lamb? Sheep? Lamb? Sheep? Okay. So what type of people have that? All praises. You can use, look, okay, I got you. You don't want to say it. All right, black people. All right, black people. I got you. We good? All right, we good? All right, so is this a test your wool? Is this, this a test your wool? There is King. Can you just say yes? There is? All right. Which one has wool up here? Him or him? We ain't even brought down to the meat of it. Go on. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And it's so hold fast, hold fast. We got a lot there. All right, sis. And I'm gonna build with you too, cause I don't want you to feel like I'm just on the side. And, no, I'm. We building. My brother, come over here, man. We talking about who we are in the Bible. All praises. Listen as you go. Listen as you go. We talking about the Black Messiah. That's right. And we talking about how our people have a Black King. A black God. We have a heritage according to the Bible. Right. All right. So what I was so next part we already covered the wool. It said Christ got red eyes. Now let me ask you something. You as an older woman, what happened? Y'all got a roll. Y'all got a roll. We gonna keep teaching. But I want y'all to understand something. That fly on the back. Read that. Take that to your parents. It's our duty to keep the commandments to set this world back in order. To get this back straight. This don't stop. But this was the beginning for you. For real. When you get back, your life won't be different. It's going to be forever changed because God watching you now. Right. All right. What's wrong, my brothers? I got to tell them, sis. I had to tell them. Just like I got to warn you and my sister, too. Like I said, I'm not out here to attack. I'm not out here to destroy. I'm here to build up. Right. Like I told you, you beautiful. Give me Ezekiel 16. Give me Ezekiel 16. Because we're going to start building on that. Because we got to work on the confidence of our people. Because we have a duty at hand to rebuild a nation that's been destroyed. And all that come back by coming back to God and his commandments. All right, read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16 and verse 10. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands. So notice this. This is all the things that God had put on his people. Now let me ask you something. When you look at our people today, my brother walked past, but I'm going to use them as an example. Do you see any of that? That's glorious works. That's things like a fine garment. Christ wore a purple garment. Christ was fly. The brothers of our history and our lineage are fly. They wore priestly apparel. This is what it's talking about. And our sisters were gorgeous, like Esther. Right? Were gorgeous, were good, were beautiful works. And they were modest. Give me, uh, and let's go into that modesty because I'm talking about beauty. I'm talking about beauty. Inner beauty and outer beauty. Those things that make you perfect. The things that make you righteous as a woman. Right? Give me uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 12. 
the book of first Timothy. Yeah, yes. First Timothy, chapter two and verse nine. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety. So let me ask you something, sis. When you watch Real Real Housewives of Atlanta, do you see shamefacedness and sobriety? I don't look at it. All praise. Why don't you look at it? I, I want to no, know. Why don't you look at it? I don't like it. All praise to the Most High. You don't like it. You don't like it because it's a bad example. Right. Let me let me uh, bring something out to you. I was listening to a uh, man at work today. Uh, his wife is uh, him and his wife are from uh, they're of Asian descent. You know that any type of imagery that portrays their people in a negative connotation, they punish those who put that out there. You understand that? Because when you think about Asian people, what do you think about? You think about they smart, they in school, their kids in order. Discipline, discipline, discipline. When you look at the black community, what do you think about? You think about ignorance. Ignorance, right? Because our people have been destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's what God tells us. They don't know no better. They've been destroyed by their enemies to a certain point that you think this is natural. That's why I started off with Real Housewives of Atlanta, right? Think about it. You say you don't like that because all you see is ignorance. That's the wrong representation of a black woman doing what she, what you must rather see is a black woman support her wife. I mean, her, excuse me, woo, support her husband, support her kids, raising a house. And that's what God is talking about, how to lead a nation. And these things, read it again, read it again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. And that modest apparel is talking about the things such as a dress. Now let me ask you something. When you ever seen a princess wear a pants? I know you got your phone, I'm gonna teach you. Uh, you ain't never seen it. You royalty. But your oppressors have told you to put on the apparel of a man. Meaning I'm gonna wear the pants, I'm gonna wear the, I'm gonna come up. And that puts a manly spirit on you. Yeah. That puts a manly spirit on all of our sisters to the point of when we just read in First Timothy, you can't be shamefaced. You won't show much ignorance. When a man walk out, which walk up to a sister, what do you see on on our younger sisters? On our younger sisters, you see a lot of that. All up in their face, snapping and all that. You can't don't put your hand, all that. But that's a spirit of combatants. That's the spirit of that ignorance that you're talking about. That's the spirit of a man. Right. All right. We're gonna read this go Okay. First Timothy chapter two verse nine. And like men are also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So these are some. So these are some of the things in our community that get to our people's head because of the costly arrays, because of the, all the things that you can buy to make you into something. But the inner man, the inner woman, the things that you need. You don't have in your spirit, which makes you ugly. Right. Right. Which makes you put on different types of spirits. Right. Right. I was just talking to the sister about pants and so on and so forth. Putting on a spirit on uh, the women. Right. Let's see how God feels about that. Give me a book of Deuteronomy 22. Yes, sir. Because it got to come out. We got to fix our community. Women are not supposed to wear pants. The men wear the pants. Right. right? The pants put a spirit of a man on a woman, which makes her ignorant or make her want to come back a man or feel that she can be in the situation to where she can be in a man's face. That is not shame face according to the Bible, according to God. Right? And that's Bible. You got, you got it for me? All praise. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. See, the Bible makes it very <clears throat> the Bible makes it very clear. It's no misunderstanding. The man shall not cross dress. When we talk about a man wearing a dress, that is strange apparel. Right. And the God said he will destroy all people with strange apparel when he revisits us on the earth. Right. That's strange for a man to cross dress. But when we bring out the things that pertain to a woman, as far as a woman wearing pants, now that's something uh, you got to back up. But no, that's cross dressing according to the Lord thy God. Right. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You hear that, my brothers, my sister all over there? It's an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If you are a man wearing a dress and a woman, if you are wearing pants, portraying to be a man, right. that is abomination. Right. It is vile. It is nasty according to the Most High God.
indigenous men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord.